This pint-sized bird is the only bird of prey in North America that nests exclusively underground. While their name might have you thinking they're expert diggers, burrowing owls actually just steal their burrows from other animals. This is the only subterranean owl, the tiny terror of the prairies. This is the burrowing owl. Hi, my name is Arania and you are watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. Today we are in Grasslands National Park and we are looking for burrowing owls. So right behind me is a very large prairie dog colony and I think I just saw a smallish bird, kind of brown, fly off into the distance. The fact that we're near this prairie dog colony where there are a lot of burrows makes me think that what I saw was actually a burrowing owl. These superb owls are a subspecies of the burrowing owl, which lives all the way from Canada to Argentina. Their preferred habitats are in the Caribbean, the North American plains, and the South American savannas, all the way down to Patagonia. There are 18 subspecies, and the local one, the western burrowing owl, spends the summers having babies here, and winters in warmer locations like Mexico and Central America. Although it may not look like it right now, this area gets ridiculously cold in the winter, with temperatures dropping to almost negative 40 degrees Celsius. In the summer, though, the weather is beautiful, the skies are blue, and the prey is abundant. Burrowing owls are amazing hunters. Equally lethal in the air and on the ground, these cute little killers specialize in small prey. Small rodents and large insects, like crickets and beetles, are their favorite meals. They have all the available bird tools to find their prey. Their heads are mostly eyes, which are optimized for low light settings. They're also unusual among owls in that they're active during the day, as their prey is mostly diurnal. It makes sense that we saw the burrowing owl just as the sun was going down. Even though it's a diurnal bird, they do tend to be more active during dusk and dawn, and we are just about nearing dusk. If we can hold on a little bit longer, we might get a chance to look at them again. Their ears, like in other owls, are asymmetrical, so they can pinpoint the location of their prey in the x-axis, like we can, but also on the y-axis, a helpful tool for a flying hunter. Underneath this grass, the land is teeming with animal activity. Some of them even become accidental engineers for burrowing owls. Their name comes from their nesting sites, which are built by other burrowing animals. Around here, they take up residence in the vast tunnel networks of their prairie dogs. A very characteristic behavior of burrowing owls is standing right on top of the mound of dirt that the prairie dogs have excavated for their own burrows. When you see the prairie dogs, you should scan the mounds to see if the burrowing owls are nearby. Their dens are lined with ungulate poop, usually from bison or cattle. This isn't some sort of Baroque decoration choice, but rather a practical solution that solves two problems. Number one, it helps to insulate the burrow and keeps the internal temperature relatively constant. And number two, it attracts insects such as dung beetles, which are then eaten faster than the blink of a bright yellow eye. It's kind of like the strategy used by the witch in Hansel and Gretel, but instead of a house made of candy, it's a hole full of feces. But if it works, it works. Being somewhat vulnerable to predators, they have learned to use the methods of another local burrow dweller, the rattlesnake. So right now, we're keeping a safe distance from the burrowing owl, but if we or other predators get closer to its burrow, it actually makes a sound that sounds like a little bit like a rattlesnake. That is an example of mimicry in order to scare away predators who might be coming inside to get at the eggs of the burrowing owl. They did not migrate all the way here just to have their eggs stolen by a bunch of mammals. Their dark brown coat actually helps them camouflage in this environment, which makes it great for the owl to escape from the predators, but makes my life about 10 times harder. Owl parents raise up to 12 chicks simultaneously. But wait, how does such a small mama owl fit so many eggs in her little body? 
She lays the eggs one by one, every one to two days over about two weeks. Then they'll hatch roughly at the same time about 25 days later. The chicks learn to fly at a month old, but the parents keep feeding them until they're three months old. By then, it'll be almost time to start making their way south to their wintering grounds. Given that the burrowing owl's range extends all the way from BC down to Florida, it actually overlaps with a lot of other owl species. If you're specifically on the lookout for burrowing owls though, here are some characteristics that you should keep in mind. Burrowing owls are tiny, measuring only nine inches tall. They're slightly larger than a robin, but smaller than a crow, and quite puny compared to other owls found in the Americas. Oh, he's heavier than the last guy. Wow, it is so much smaller than I thought it would be. It looks so similar to the ground dogs, but it moves in a different way and its structure is so different as it's standing on a mound. From this distance, you can tell that they don't have the ear tufts that you would usually expect owls to have, but they do have a very symmetrical round face. One unique characteristic of the burrowing owl is their legs. Usually, owl species like the snowy owls have short, stubby legs with very furry talons and claws. Burrowing owl legs instead are very long and skinny and don't have that much fur, giving them a very elegant but odd look. Unlike other owls, they also don't have a face desk, but they have these amazing white emotive eyebrows that always makes them look like they're just a little bit angry. <laughs> They also use their eyebrows to signal distress. Lucky for them, burrowing owls don't have many reasons to be distressed, since they're doing much better than other owl species. Burrowing owls adapt really well to human environments and are commonly seen in farmlands, airports, and golf courses. The deforestation of the Amazon rainforest for cattle ranching has opened up new feeding grounds for them, even though it's causing the disappearance of thousands of other species. That doesn't mean that humans are always a positive force for the burrowing owls. In fact, diseases often come from industrial facilities. Right now, they're fighting avian flu, which originates in chicken farms and has taken a deadly toll on wild birds all over the world. Raptors like owls and hawks are especially vulnerable, and in most cases, it's lethal. Burrowing owls in zoos are currently off exhibit and in quarantine to protect them from this deadly disease. Humans also have a contentious relationship with prairie dogs. These rodents are often seen as pests and subsequently eradicated. But without them, burrowing owls and other species lose their primary burrow makers and their prime nesting areas. There are so many reasons to protect the burrowing owls. When you protect burrowing owl habitat, you also protect a host of other species. One example is that noise that you hear in the background, which are black-tailed prairie dogs. If we protect burrowing owls, we by extension also protect the habitat for this species. The second reason to conserve burrowing owls is that they are a natural pest control. The majority of their diet is made up of insects, such as grasshoppers. So when we conserve these burrowing owls, we're actually helping to maintain the balance in the ecosystem between the insects, the birds, and the animals. So there you have it, the cutest migrating killer in all of North America. If you want to spot one, come down to Saskatchewan. Don't forget to be on the lookout for other amazing wildlife and also these stunning views. Thank you so much for watching. Keep soaring to new heights and I'll see you later.